when we're talking about seed oils, if we're just kind of in that realm and we're saying, okay, what are the randomized controlled trials that right. have been done with seed oils? Right. You look here. I, so I summarized about 11 of them and there's rose corn oil, there's Ozo diet heart. There's one called the medical research council trial, Los Angeles veterans trial, Sydney diet heart, Minnesota coronary, um, the diet and reinfarction. There's St. Thomas atherosclerosis, national diet heart study, the Finnish mental health hospital study. There's Houtzmuller diabetic angiography, angiography or angiopathy trial. And so these are all done between, let's say, 1958 and 1980s. Okay. We don't have any more recent trials on seed oils. Wow. And if you go through them, I mean, we can go through them individually if you'd like, or I can give you a, a high level yeah. from what I think. Um, if you go through them, what you find is that the trials are consistently poorly constructed. We have some trials which uh, say seed oils increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. And... Um, I, and you have some trials which say seed oils don't increase the, increase the risk of cardiovascular disease or potentially even lower it. And So there are some that say it lowers there, it. There are some that say it lowers it. But in my analysis, this is my analysis, Nick can um, look at these or he can give us his sense of what he thinks about the RCTs uh, broadly as well. Uh, when you look at the ones that say seed oils are benign or beneficial, mm -hmm. they're, they're, you can basically pick something wrong with every single one of those trials. For instance, if you look at the Ozo Diet Heart Study, we can double click on this and one. And we right see here. who funds these trials too? They're they're from so long ago. So right. here's Ozo Diet Heart, 1958 to 1963, right? Five year follow up, 412 participants. It's a control group, and the experimental group is getting 76% of its calories from soybean oil um, in the experimental group. Now, okay. the experimental group had a significant reduction in serum cholesterol, which was associated with a reduced coronary heart disease relapse rate. And I said here, so they, they had more seed oils and they had decreased coronary heart disease relapse rate. Now, the potential flaws, the control group, right, had 9.6% of their calories from trans fat. This is the problem is that in the 1950s and 60s, we didn't really understand trans fat. So this mm. is what I mean when I say these trials are poorly constructed, right. right? The experimental group, which is the seed oil group, was also encouraged to eat more nuts, fruit, and vegetables, and to restrict their intake of refined grains and sugars. So this is a... This is a randomized controlled trial that gets included in a lot of meta-analyses that will conclude, oh, seed oils are benign, but you see wow. how poorly constructed the trial is. Like, okay, now you can go down here. We can look at um, another one. What's a good one here? Um, the Finnish Mental Hospital Studies, another. Why don't we do these studies anymore? If it's such a, such a hot topic in society. I was society. reading the Minnesota Coronary Experiment Study, which is done in a multi-center, multiple mental hospitals. And actually, I was I was joking with someone because there's a section where they're like, and this is why we didn't get patient consents. Bottom line, ethics have changed around doing these sort of uh, experiments. Ethics have changed? Millions of dollars also, and who funds it? And the I would argue, and this is just my perspective, the ultra-processed food industry is comfortably ensconced, right? They are making billions of dollars on these foods. If a trial came out that said seed oils were harmful, someone stands to lose, lose billions, if not right. trillions of dollars. Who pays for this? This is a 15 to $20 million study over seven years plus potentially, right? The, the ethics are difficult and we're kind of stuck back to the ApoB thing also because it's probably difficult within Western medicine to do any trial that could potentially raise your ApoB because we're stuck in this perspective that anything that raises your ApoB will increase your cardiovascular risk. And we know pretty clearly as we'll see if we look at Minnesota coronary experiment that, and, and many of these like Sydney diet heart also, giving someone seed oils lowers their LDL. But oftentimes, and I would say in the best constructed trials, not perfectly, in the best constructed trials, that doesn't equate to a decrease in cardiovascular disease. So there are so, there are all sorts of hmm. problems in terms of our, our sort of paradigm today in terms of how yeah. we look at things. And there's this who funds it and why would it get done, right? Let's just look at the Finnish mental health, mental hospital study. So this is um, this is pretty commonly included in meta-analyses, 1959 to 1971, 676 subjects, control diet, which is often the saturated fat-rich diet versus the experimental diet. Uh, it was carried out in two mental hospitals near Helsinki. One of the hospitals received a cholesterol-lowering diet, a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol relatively high in polyunsaturated fats from soybean oil. The other was served as a control with a normal hospital diet. After six years, the diets were reversed. Now, the use of the cholesterol-lowering diet was associated with significantly reduced mortality from coronary heart disease, okay? Now, there was significantly more trans fat in the control diets. The hospital K had 2% trans fat in the control diet versus zero in the experimental group. And the hospital N had 0.6% trans fat versus 0.2. Mm -hmm. 
There were minor differences in baseline characteristics such as age, BMI, smoking, and blood pressure between the two groups. And there was a cardiotoxic medication, thioridazine, which we don't use anymore, um, that was more commonly given to people in the control group. So there was inadequate randomization also between the two things. So you can see how how like obfuscated these trials are. Yeah. Like, how could you say what's going on? You're giving a control group in um, hospital K and hospital N a diet with significantly more trans fat, which we know <clears throat> is cardiotoxic. And then there's more patients in the control group getting a cardiotoxic medication like thioridazine and that's going to make the saturated fat group look worse. So this is what happens with these trials, right? It's now you can go through all of them and look at these, but these what's important to point out here is that meta-analyses are written today and they have these trials in the meta-analysis and they'll say, "Oh, right. look, look at the combined. Like if you just if you do a forest plot with the results of all 11 of these trials, you might find a combined effect which favors seed oils." But what what if you throw out the trials that are obviously poorly constructed, right? Right. So then you have it's to, the foundation of all the new stuff we come up with is it, this these poorly done studies. Yes, these poorly done studies, which will probably never be repeated. That's crazy. So it's man. this we end up in this situation where we almost have to look at mechanisms because the randomized controlled trials, and then you know, you can look at stuff like we can look at city. And who was the guy uh Huberman was talking about? Um he there's some guy at Stanford, a brain surgeon or something, who said, and Huberman said this. He said that this guy from Stanford, this brain guy. Uh, said like 60 to 80 percent of all the medical literature is either incorrect or outdated. Bhattacharya has talked about that or no, it's John Ioannidis. No, I think he had like a um, he had like an Asian last name, oh. like a Chinese or Japanese or something like that. Uh, is one thing to say so what is that guy's name? incorrect. Another thing to say incomplete. I, I mean, he said I, either incorrect or uh, new stuff has basically. Oh, yeah, I believe that. You evolve models. That's what science is. It's never complete. It's right. always probabilistic and evolving. That's what's beautiful. Um, I do want to get back into mechanism, but I think something to highlight, there is no perfect study. So you can always poke holes in a study. I think one that would be good to talk about that I actually think is on balance a pretty decent study that has gotten some heat is the Minnesota coronary experiment. If we're going to delve into yeah, one. We can talk about it. So um, yeah, just to kind of give a high level breakdown of this. Um, there were patients kept at mental hospitals and I think one nursing home and they were given a, a diet that was either, um, very elevated in linoleic acid. I think it was close to 14% of kcals from linoleic acid, like 13 18 to 20 of calories from linoleic acid. Are you sure? Uh -huh. Well, uh, can you punch it on this, Steve? Our experimental oh, diet goal was to provide 18 to 20% of calories from polyunsaturated fat, while the control diet oh. aimed for 18% of calories from saturated fat. Oh, okay. There yeah. were 9,000 give or take participants. I, I think it ended up being like 13 point, I uh, actually have the a primary paper up here, um, something like 13 point, uh, anyway, that that aside, there was a, a larger, one minute, 13.2% of calories versus 4.7. So there was a randomized control trial, in this case it was actually double blinded supposedly, where there was a group that was given more uh, linoleic acid in the form of corn oil versus a group that got a higher saturated fat diet relatively. Right. And then the results were a massive drop in LDL in the corn oil group. Right. But trending towards worse mortality, so more deaths um, and more Especially, cardiovascular disease, including on autopsy. So they had autopsies yes. of these people. Especially in the older the older age groups, over 65. It, it appeared to be the case. The fact is a lot of the data weren't available. They were like in the basement on like nine track tapes and they had to be recovered. And There's a crazy story about this one. Yeah, I Malcolm was, Gladwell, you shared a podcast really? this morning. Yeah. Nick, yeah, Malcolm Gladwell did a uh, did a podcast about this on his revisionist history called yeah. The Basement Tapes. Mm -hmm. The history of this is that Ansel Keys, so who is a kind of an infamous researcher. Yeah. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Nick, but I'll just add this yeah. and then I'll let you run with it again. Um, infamous researcher in the 1950s and 1960s was one of the primary authors of this paper. And yeah. um, uh, he and the uh, main author did not publish the results for many, many years. And then Chris Ramsden, um, who's done a lot of interesting work in the space that we can talk about some other stuff that he's done, um, actually found the information in a in one of these primary authors' basements and redid the analysis many years later, 16 years later, I think. So that, that I mean, Ansel Keys- And that's this stuff? That's this study. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it wasn't originally published. Um, Ansel Keys obviously was in favor of the hypothesis that polyunsaturated fats were good for humans. 
he was kind of the beginning of this diet heart hypothesis, and this didn't fit his results. So that that this possible that he wasn't happy about this. Who knows? Whoa. Or they just got lost. It, yeah. So I, I again come back to, it's interesting framing. Is it possibly suppressed? Maybe I don't even know that that's a functional way to look at it. Who knows? So but we we can talk a little bit more about the study and the criticisms of it. Um, Steve, can you go copy the um, PubMed ID in Paul's tweet and then go to uh, figure six in the paper? It's going to become relevant in a second. But um, high level, the criticisms as I understand them, because again, there is no perfect study. It's been, right. it's been being talked about recently because I think Mark, Mark Hyman did a pretty viral reel on it where, like you said, in the other trials, there was more trans fat in one group. It's being argued that the higher trans fat diet was the corn oil diet and that that accounted for the effect. And also about three quarters of the patients uh, dropped out of the trial. It's complicated. My it's two been... cents on this is, OK, first of all, I don't know how much the trans fat difference between the groups actually was, if at all. Um, it's interesting. Ramsden and I'll actually talk about this in the paper. Um, they, they talk about how Ansel Keys knew trans fats elevated saturated fat, so it would have designed the diet in he, such a way. They elevated to, LDL. Trans fats yeah, elevated LDL. Elevated LDL. So it would have been di designed in a way to potentially minimize the trans fats. It's all speculative as to whether there was actually a difference in trans fats and what that difference would be. Mm -hmm. Now, even if there was a difference, I really find it unlikely that it drove. You might go to my screen, Steve. Oh, yeah. Um, I, have, I have that. And you want figure... F I, go, I was going to show six uh, in the, the panel on the bottom left. Pe you'll know what I mean when I say it. Show it. Um, I don't think that the trans fat difference, even if it exists, would drive the full effect. Hmm. It's possible. Figure five or figure six? Six. Okay. Um, you know, and then the other thing with the attrition, because this keeps on coming up, it's very easy to try to discredit studies like this by saying, oh, they lost 75% of their participants. But when you think about how it was constructed, the only way you get this sort of control is like hospitalized patients. And guess what? Patients get discharged. So yeah, they right. selected to do the analysis on patients who had been in the study over a year and three quarters or more or less got discharged from the hospital. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason. And I was talking with another um, a scientist about this study. And I was making the point, like, do you have any reason to believe that would actually bias the results? They still had over 2,000 people. Yes, the end value decreased, but I don't see any reason why the attrition would lead to bias. So I don't think that can account for the findings. So how do you account for findings like, um, are we seeing Paul's screen? If you go down to the, uh, scroll down a tiny bit, Paul, like the, the bottom left, uh, you can read the caption, death from any cause and change in cholesterol in the cohorts receiving the diets for one year or more. A and, and what do you see? Like, there's actually a pretty clear dose response from cholesterol lowering and probability of death. That's what it's saying. The more right to you go, the lower the cholesterol drops as a result of the intervention and the higher the probability of death. The lower the cholesterol goes, the more people and, die. And, and again, it's really important to be clear about what claims I am making and what claims I'm rebutting or not making. So I'm not saying omega-6 linoleic acid kills. I'm not making that claim. What I'm saying, and actually if you read the Ramsden paper they more or less make this point is this is highly inconsistent with the current um, diet heart hypothesis and that we need to be more humble about our knowledge based on the evidence and not make sweeping recommendations like chop saturated fat, increase unsaturated fat, and LDL is bad, and if you lower it, it's good. It's, again, the, the idea of the, the myopic focus on LDL. Yeah. It's rebutting a claim, not necessarily making the extreme opposite claim. And I think that's super important. I mean, these might so be interesting to look at too. The higher the cholesterol, the lower the mortality rate? The, mm. as, as the cholesterol dropped, more people died. So as people in the, we talked about this earlier, as people got the seed oil group, they, they cholesterol drops. When you give people polyunsaturated fats, you're, you will lower the LDL. We can talk about the potential mechanisms there. And so in the Minnesota coronary experiment, and these are the Kaplan-Meier survival curves, which we can talk about as well. Okay. Um, in the Minnesota coronary experiment, the people that had the highest degree of cholesterol lowering had the highest increased rate of death, right? Wow. The most increased rate of death. And what Nick is saying is that this is in contradistinction to the mainstream recommendations that cholesterol lowering is always good. And this is why Minnesota has been talked about so much. It's the largest trial that we have 
it was very rigorously conducted. Again, Ansel Keys, a proponent of the diet heart hypothesis, was one of the key investigators here. It was mm -hmm. double blinded. So what that means is that the patients nor the doctors knew what was in these burger patties that they got. Mm -hmm. This is like the equivalent of Beyond Beef in the 1950s and 60s. Some people got burger patties that were enriched in corn oil, and some people got burger patties that were enriched in, in other saturated fat-rich margarines. As Nick has pointed out, both groups probably got trans fats. And one of the criticisms of this study has been, well, did the experimental group get more trans fats? And mm. then, as, as Nick and I, I believe, are both arguing, what we know about trans fat is they raise LDL, right? And in the experimental group, the LDL tended to go down. Right. So if the amount of trans fat in the experimental group were significant enough to skew the results, then why did the LDL go down so much in the experimental group? And why was it that the more the LDL went down, the higher there was um, the incidence of death, right? So you're, you're having worse outcomes. Essentially, like it's trending toward worse outcomes when you give people more seed oils, potentially, mm -hmm. which is different than what the experimenters expected. Thank <laughs> you.